Hey guys, Nathan here with Tier 3 Gaming, and with Christmas right around the corner, I've brought a gift for you. It's a gift that keeps on giving, too. I'm sure you're all familiar with it so long as you play Standard. It's Godfrey's Gift, and I have a new spin on it. Tier 3 Gaming and Nathan Spin! Now before we get into my deck profile, I'm going to go over the basic concepts of how the Godfrey's Gift deck works. The deck utilizes the card Godfrey's Gift to reanimate creatures from your graveyard as 4-4 creatures with haste. The cool thing is, they still get all of their enter the battlefield triggers. So, for instance, cards such as Angel of Invention, when brought back from grave, will get its Fabricate ability to either create two servos or to give itself the plus one plus one twice. Now, ideally in the deck, you want to be tossing as many creatures as you can into the grave to kind of fuel your momentum for the later to mid-game area match. Um, let's see, the Esper God Pharaoh gift deck, which is one of the more popularized variations of the deck, will be bringing God Pharaoh's gift directly from grave, hand, or field to the battlefield using a card called Gate to the Afterlife. The next variation is the blue-white build which tosses Godfrey's Gift into Grave and then uses a card called Refurbish to bring it back from Grave to the battlefield. Now, this deck, this deck is a little bit different. It's going to be using the same mechanics as the Godfrey's, the Blue-White Godfrey's Gift deck, but it's going to be trying to do it a little bit faster, and that's why it's the Red, White, and Blue version. Good old Jess guy. So in order to speed up the process of getting Godfrey's Gift into the graveyard, we're going to have to toss in a lot of turn two cantrips. And I mean a lot of turn two cantrips. So many cantrips. One of the turn two cantrips that we're going to be doing is Chart of Course. It's a great two drop, draw two cards, and discard a card. So you're fueling your hand, and if you have a lot of stuff in your hand that you don't like, like God Pharaoh's Gift or Angel Invention, you're going to be pitching it to the graveyard. Another card very similar to that in this deck will be Cathartic Reunion. We're going to be running that as a three of. Cathartic Reunion allows us to pitch two and then draw three. It's a, it's a one for one. But it does give us the ability to toss unnecessary things out of our hand. We're going to be running two Tormenting Voices. Another card where it's a one for one. You toss one, you draw two. And Strategic Planning. This card is so good for the deck. You're going to be looking at the top three cards, picking one to add to your hand, and toss the rest to Graveyard. That's going to get unnecessary lands, creatures, and God Pharaoh's Gift out of the way from your draws, because no one's draw wants to be interrupted by a bad God Pharaoh's Gift that you don't want in hand. Now moving on to turn three, we're going to be laying down a little bit of creature presence, so that way we stay alive just long enough to start getting our combo rolling. So for turn three, we're going to be dropping a Champion of Whips. This guy is awesome. He allows us to draw two and discard two when he's summoned. So he's going he's gonna to give us a lot of synergy with our combo and with some other cards that I'll explain later. As you're moving on to turn four, I'm hoping, you're hoping, and your opponent is hoping you don't have the Refurbish and Godfrey's Gift combo play. So turn four, after all the draw and discard that you've been doing, you should have easily tossed one of these into your graveyard and drawn into one of these. You're going to cast the Refurbish and bring the God Pharaoh's Gift back from your graveyard. And that's how you're going to start your combo. Next up, let's go over some of the creatures that you're going to want to have in Grave. Four copies of Angel of Invention. Two copies of Combustible. Now, Combustible works really well with the deck. It puts your opponent into a very tight spot. They either have to let you draw three cards, which is never a good thing, or toss the top three cards of your library into your graveyard, which is fueling your strategy, and considering most of the cards that you have in your deck have a fairly high mana cost, also putting them in, in danger due to the fact that they're going to be taking damage equal to the converted mana cost of each card. And <clears throat> my personal favorite touch, brought to me by a good friend of mine, is four Combat Celebrant. Now this card works amazingly well with the God Pharaoh's Gift. The play is, you're going to bring out a Combat Celebrant. Provided they don't have a 4-4 on board, you can clear their entire field almost every time. If you have four of these in Grave, I'm hoping you have the win. 
You're going to swing with the combat celebrant. He's going to be coming in with four. You're going to exert him. When he exerts, you untap all other creatures you control and you get another combat step. Now, if you remember properly, Godfrey's gift allows you to bring out a creature card from your graveyard at the beginning of your combat. So, swing, exert, enter next combat step, get another Godfrey's gift trigger. You're getting two triggers per turn if you have at least one engrave. If you have more, you're going to bring out another combat celebrant, swing, exert, untaps, ignoring the condition that states he will not untap, <clears throat> go into the next Godfrey's gift trigger, and continue this cycle until you feel like you kind of just won. Now, if you know that you cannot win by doing this, but you have at least two engrave, go combat celebrant, attack, exert, bring out another combat celebrant, attack, exert, which will then untap all of the creatures you control and leave him untapped so that way you can do this all again next turn. Now, one of the main cards of the deck is the same card that you're going to see in any Godfrey's gift deck, and that's going to be Minister of Inquiries. He allows you to mill three cards. Presumably, you're going to be milling yourself. You're going to bring him out, get two energy, pay an energy and tap him, and mill three. This will allow you to mill at the beginning of combat before your Godfarer's gift trigger goes off. Or if you don't have another combat celebrant in grave and you want to take your chances of getting another one, mill and hope. And the final touch that I've added to the deck is one Locust God. With all the draw that you're doing, he's putting a lot of pressure on your opponent. He's a 6 drop, 4-4. Four, four. Whenever you draw a card, you create a 1-1 one, one red and blue insect creature token with flying in haste. So you should be able to get quite a few of these little buggers out. <laughs> Bad jokes for days. Quite a few of these little buggers out that's just going to put a lot of presence on your board and keep you from losing to any fatal swings. The land base is really up to you. I chose to go with a six fast land land base, which consists of four Spire Bluff Canals and two Inspiring Vantages. I also went with three Aether Hubs, to give more fuel to my minister and allow some mana fixing. But so far my land base has been pretty nice to me. So whenever we're sideboarding with the deck, we don't want to side out too many creatures. That's going to lose a lot of the deck's purpose. So we're looking for a lot of good multi-purpose creatures to sideboard into and hopefully not taking too many out. So one of the cards that we're going to be siding into is a Cataclysmic Gear Hulk. This card is going to kind of decimate any kind of energy deck or any aggro deck really, you're gonna be putting a big body onto the board and taking away a lot of theirs. <clears throat> he also offers another refurbished target, so that's pretty good. We're gonna to be tossing in two Chaos Maws. Again, this is mostly for the aggro matchup. We're gonna be adding three Angel of, Inv or Angel of, what the f does that say? We're gonna be adding three Angel of Sanctions. This is a 5-drop 3-4 flyer, and when it enters the battlefield, you can take a non-land permanent your opponent controls and exile it until it leaves the battlefield. This is mostly going to be brought in against Godfarrow Gift decks, especially the Esper Godfarrow Gift matchup. They're going to be using cards like Kite Sail Freebooter and uh, Hostage Taker to steal any of your key components to get your combo rolling. So you're going to bring this out, take their Hostage Taker, take their Kite Sail Freebooter and get your pieces back so that way your combo can go off and keep them a little farther behind. Or if they have the Godfarrow's Gift on, on field, steal it from them. Now, the next card that I'm gonna bring in is kind of, a, kind of a little weird. It's a Nimble Obstructionist. This is a three drop, three one flyer with flash and whenever you cycle it, which it cycles for two and a blue, you can counter target activated or triggered ability you don't control. So cards like Hostage Taker, Kite Sail Freebooter, or any of the energy cards that are going, going to be going off, you can cycle this to your graveyard, which is giving you fuel, and counter their ability, which will stop their whatever they're trying to do to you. Next up, we have Settle the Wreckage. This is an instant exile all creatures that are attacking spell. So for cards that are hard to get rid of, like Scarab God, or carnage tyrant this is going to exile all of them at instant speed so long as they're attacking 
Unfortunately, your opponent's going to get to search for some basic lands. Following that, we have Authority of the Consuls. This is a really great card, especially against the aggro and energy matchups. And it does really well against Godfro's Gift. Whenever a creature an opponent controls enters the battlefield, it enters tapped, and you gain a life. Now, if you know anything about Godfro's Gift, anything that's brought out from the graveyard with that card gains haste. So this, this really stops them. And cards like... Mostly the Romanov red decks that are going to be using a lot of uh, a lot of hasty creatures to try and get in there this is going to put an end to that as well. And lastly, two of braids. This card is going to deal three damage to a creature or destroy an artifact. So again, this is a lot of a lot of God Pharaoh hate, which is a little ironic, but that's going to be one of your hardest matchups. This card can also just shoot a creature down that you don't want to deal with in any other way. And that is the deck. Tell us what you think about it in the comments below, and if you liked it, hit that little red subscribe button to see some more videos in your upcoming future.